Hello everyone, this is the Mining Geologist and I'm back again with another very exciting and very informative tutorial. So uh, again, we're looking at QGIS, my favorite GIS tool, and even that it is actually a GIS tool. Uh, I use it in other stuff related to the mining industry and geology. So don't think that as a mining geologist or as a mining engineer, you should only learn mining softwares. No, there's this software that can actually do uh, almost pretty much anything. And I use it to solve a lot of things. And sometimes even if there's uh, a tool that I need, I even considered you know, developing that tool using uh, Python uh, scripting. By the way, if you guys are really interested in Python, uh, apply to geoscience, to mining engineering, uh, please let me know in the comments below because I'm actually working on a master class, believe it or not, that will allow you to create your own geological modeling software totally in Python. So this is going to be something crazy that doesn't exist anywhere else and I'm going to be the first one that will create something or a course about that. Let me know if you guys are interested about this topic and I'll try to make uh, some YouTube videos about uh, this. So in today's tutorial we are going to to solve a problem. It's a really you know small problem but it's uh, something that you can be doing this uh, on a daily basis or something that you will need a lot as a geologist or as a mining engineer. So imagine with me, I don't know if you guys have taken a look at my previous tutorial, how to generate points with a regular spacing in an area, go and check that out because uh, that this one could be like a second part for that tutorial. So also stick to the end because I have something like some sort of a surprise for you guys to uh, see. So stick to the end of the video and I'm gonna uh, show you what it is. So uh, imagine that we have a bunch of drill holes in here and somehow or we lost the elevation data, but we have the topography. And some people actually tend to go there point by point and let's say if this is a DEM and I click in here, for example, I got the elevation, it's about 1070 there, it's 1057 there, it's a 302 here. So imagine that I have a lot of points in here and I need to assign an elevation to them. Or let's go and do the same exercise that we've done in the past in the previous video for people who are, who are lazy to go and check that uh, tutorial. So let's, but if you want, you want to see the details, go and watch the previous video. So let's go and create a temporary uh, scratch layer and uh, I'll call this like probably area and uh, keep it that way. Let me go and really fast. So this is not actually the tutorial guys. This is just me making some data. And if you're interested to see what I'm doing here, go and check the previous tutorial. So let's make this simple and say like probably 50. And I'm gonna use that layer and let's go and run. Yeah, I have one point because it looks like the area is really, but okay, let's not do that. Let me go and remove this, discard, okay. And I'm gonna go and toggle editing here and let me go and assign some other points. So this ID uh, one, okay, another one, two, another one, three, or whatever. Okay, so let's just make another point. So these are points, so I have the X and Y for these, but I want to add the elevation, so I want to grab that information from the uh, this DEM without actually going through this and click on that location. I mean like selecting this and click on that specific location and I know it's 523 so in our case they are just basically five points and that's not too much what if we have like a thousand points and it is actually nearly impossible to do that in a short time so this is gonna be time-consuming 
and there's actually a way to do that. In the previous tutorial, I've showed you how to actually calculate the X and Y automatically for these points. So we don't care about this ID, so let me go and delete that. So in order to calculate the X and Y for these coordinates, for these points, what I, all I have to do is to go to the field calculator. By the way, this is the attribute table. You right click and go to the attribute table. This is where all the information about these points are stored. Okay, this is like an Excel sheet inside uh, that layer. Okay, that stores whatever data that you want. But there are actually some data that some spatial data like the area, uh, the x, the y and the elevation, we can calculate that automatically. And you can make like a combination of all of these to like get uh, the information that you want. Okay, maybe that, for example, you want the area divided by four. So the, th the same things that you can do in Excel, you can do this here, or almost uh, the same things. Okay, so let's go to the field calculator. And this is actually the calculator that will allow us to create some sort of scripts and be able to generate uh, an expression and apply that to all of the features that we have in that layer. In our case, let me show you a simple thing. So let's create a field, which means a, co a column, in which we are going to calculate the X automatically, okay? So the X, we are going to choose like a decimal number because we want some precision. We'll call this column X. And the expression for that is actually the dollar mark and X. And you can see in the preview here, this is an example of an X. So we know that this expression is right. If you want to go through this, you can go to, for example, to geometry, since X is related to geometry. And you can see that that specific uh, thing, that specific expression is actually here. You can see the dollar mark and X. This will allow us to calculate the X. Now, if I click on this one, you will have... Uh, an example here. So if I use the dollar and X, I will get 42. I will get exactly a number. In our case, we get the X value. If you can go to all of these and see how they work. In our example here for X at, you add this one and you have an explanation in here and you can see what it generates. So this is going to be X and you can see that we have the X coordinates. Let's go and create the uh, Y is just to show you what or how we can do this. So again, the dollar mark and Y, and you can see this is actually the Y, and we have the Y coordinates. Now, what about the Z? We can't actually calculate the elevation automatically. We need to grab that data from a, uh, another layer, which is, in our case, the DEM. So let me show you the expression to do that. So we know that the X, the dollar x give us the x coordinate and the dollar y gives us the y coordinate. Let's go and check some of the expression that we have in here. We're going to call this uh, z for the elevation and we want that to be a decimal number with just two decimals for the precision in there. And let's go and search. So basically we have a raster, we have a raster which is a DEM in which we have the elevation stored in the pixels, okay? So that information of the elevation, we need to extract that from the pixel. So we need to have access to the pixel information uh, on that specific uh, X and Y coordinates. So there's actually uh, an expression here called raster value that will allow us to extract the value of a raster in a specific point. So Boom, that's exactly what we want. So here's the expression. It's raster dash value, and then we assign the DEM, which is in our case that DEM, and then one, which is the band. So if we have just, you know, a, a grayscale uh, DEM that in which we have just black and white, then basically we have just one band. I'll show you in a moment how you check how many bands uh, you have in a raster uh, uh, file. And so basically, in our case, and in your case also, if you have a DEM, it's going to be one here. So it's going to be always one. And then make point, so that's another uh, expression there, make point, that takes X and Y. So 
here in this one and one we can replace these with the expressions that we've seen in the past which is the dollar x for for the x coordinate and the dollar y for the y coordinate and this is going to give us the raster value in that specific x and y coordinates and that's which in our case it's going to be the elevation so i hope that clear guys and let me see how this actually works so we are going to double click on this one we have the raster value the second thing is the DEM so here is how to grab the DEM so basically the DEM in our case is a layer that we have in uh, the project right here so you can see here you will notice that we have map layers okay with this one we can have access to any of the layers that we have and you can see that this is the shape file that we're working on and this is the DEM so I just uh, double click on this one and you can see that the DEM is now assigned so if you forgot about the expression you can go back and type in raster and click on this one you can see now that we have raster value now DEM that's our DEM and then we need to add comma so we've added the comma and then we have space one which is the band number one and you can see that now we are in the band we have the layer covered we have the band covered now uh, another comma and now we need to insert the point so all we have to do is to uh, type in make point which is another expression and now we need to have the x coordinate how do we calculate that automatically in this specific point so all we have to do is to use that expression dollar x and then we add the y coordinate dollar y and now all we have to do is to you can see that expression is not valid let's close these and let's close that again and you can see now we're grabbing the elevation now if I'm going to click on OK you can see now we have another column which is the Z which is the elevation and we've grabbed that elevation from every single one of these points so automatically without any hustle and now if we uh, let's go and close this one and uh, stop editing now if I click on this one you can see that I wait a second you can see that I have the elevation and X and Y so if I click on this one on what's happening here oh uh, I'm clicking yeah outside I guess so did I save it Oh, I didn't save that so they were not saved and uh, that's uh, that's not an issue so all you have to do is to uh, do that again and you get the X and Y and Z sorry for that but that's it so then you basically when you start editing and you and click this one so let's say I'm going to type in a lot of things here and then you need to click save and uh, it should be saved okay so let's uh, look at this again it's uh, saved anyway so this was the tutorial how to actually calculate that automatically the elevation based on a, a DEM but we for before we end this uh, tutorial I said for the people who are going to stick to the end actually uh, make sure to subscribe that's the first thing please that's what we share here QJS 3D geological modeling and mining softwares this channel is for you and the second thing, this is actually the website where you can learn a lot of things about mining engineering. And I have a lot of courses in here. You can see that they're pretty cheap. But if that's not uh, cheap for you, then I've got this uh, thing for you, which is the um, which is actually a coupon code. Use mining subscriber before this date here and you will get 50% off so if you use that today you'll grab any of these courses for 15 bucks and that's something that you cannot find anywhere on the whole internet so use the coupon code mining subscriber and grab any course that you want before this date so I hope this tutorial was useful for you and please if you have anything in your mind you want you want it to be covered in a tutorial let me know in the comments below and i'll make sure to add that as soon as possible so that's it for this video stay safe 
and see you in the next one.